This is the home of one of the world's most distinguished church historians. Here, at Yale University, for the past half century, Professor Roland Bainton has conducted studies giving new understanding to the life and times of Martin Luther. Dr. Bainton's most famous book, Here I Stand, pictures the struggles, conflicts, and achievements of Luther's life. Now, Dr. Bainton tells that story in the German countryside where Luther walked. We begin 500 years ago. This land, once ruled by princes and dukes, would become Germany. It was then part of the Holy Roman Empire, that powerful alliance of church and state which claimed authority over life and soul. In these streets, peasants once struggled in poverty and ignorance, still believing the earth to be flat. Here, in the Middle Ages, winds of change were beginning to sweep across Europe. It was the time of Columbus, Magellan, Copernicus, Michelangelo. Here, Gutenberg's printing press was born. It was the beginning of the Renaissance. And into this time and place, there came another who would also be remembered. In the year 1483, in the town of Eisleben, a child, but a day old, was brought by its father here in this very place to be baptized. That child was Martin Luther, baptized in the name of the father and the son and the Holy Ghost. As young Martin grew, he followed the plans and dreams of his father. He would become a lawyer. Martin Luther was trudging over a dirt road to the University of Erfurt when of a sudden he was struck by a shattering storm of lightning and of thunder which knocked him to the ground. He screamed. St. Anne, help me. I will become a monk. And she did, and he did. The winds of that storm brought Luther to this monastery, the Augustinian cloister in the city of Erfurt. <laughs> Luther had made a vow to God. He would dedicate his life serving God, hoping that his terrible fear of God's judgment would then be quieted. In his first year at the monastery, no one worked harder to please God than Luther. He committed himself to a rigid schedule of study, meditation, and fasting. Finally, after two years, Luther would take the vows of priesthood and stand at this altar here at the monastery church to say his first mass. When Luther said his first mass, all went well until he came to the words, we will wear eterno Deo, to thee, the living, the true, the eternal God. And he thought, to whom am I speaking? to God. He sits above the circle of the earth. The nations before him are as a drop in the bucket. Cherubim and seraphim fall down before him. And who am I, weak, puny, sinful, that I should come before him saying, I want this, I want that. If in the presence of an earthly king one should tremble, 
how much more in the presence of the heavenly king. And only with the utmost effort could Luther hold himself at the altar until the mass was finished. Dominus After his first mass, Luther came to the banquet and sat next to his father, hoping for a word of comfort and full understanding. The father at first had been incensed that his favorite son had become a monk. He was trying to play down his resentment. Luther touched him off. He said, Father, are you still unhappy that I became a monk? The life here is so quiet and tranquil. That was too much for old Hans. Young man, don't you know that God commands you to take care of your father and your mother, and you have left your mother and me to take care of Oh, but Father... I could do more for you by my prayers in the monastery than I could if I were in the world. And besides, I was called by God in the thunderstorm. Huh, snapped old Hans. Or by the devil? That question created another crisis in Luther's religious development. Was it God or was it Satan? Even after becoming a monk, Luther's fear of God's harsh judgment would not be stilled. He saw God as a harsh judge with whom it seemed he could never find peace. With increasing desperation, Luther threw himself into even greater bouts of self-sacrifice. In his loneliness and struggle, the same question continued to plague Luther. Could he ever do enough to escape God's angry judgment? Would he ever be saved? In all his torment, Luther turned to his confessor and superior, Johann Staupitz. Staupitz said to Luther, look here, young man, you're taking this too hard. All you have to do is to love God. Love God, said Luther, I hate him. And that was blasphemy. And Staupitz said, I don't understand. In German, ich verstehe es nicht. And Luther said, He's an experienced confessor, and he doesn't understand me. Am I the only one in all the world who has been so plagued 